Again, I'm Sam Gossett. I'm a low-down, sorry, rotten sinner that met Jesus one day, and he changed my life. Amen? Amen. And uh, I may not be what I should be. Thank God I'm not what I used to be. Uh, In 2006, my pastor, uh, Brother Jack Shook, was uh, asked to come and dedicate a church building in the Philippines that our home church, Roanoke Baptist Church, had sent the money to build. And uh, he was, at that time, he was 73 years old. He had just had surgery on his back, and that's 20-something hours to fly to the Philippines. And he said, there's no way I'm going to make that long trip. And he asked me to go in his place. And I had always wanted to visit a mission field. And if you ever get the opportunity to go on a mission trip, you need to take it. Amen. I promise you, there, you can see pictures, you can, you can hear people talk about it, but until you're there, uh, it really opens your eyes to a lot of things. And so I, uh, I was so excited, I went with Brother uh, Dwayne Whittemore, and uh, we were going to dedicate that church building. And my first few days there, I was saying, God, there's a need here. There's such a need here, but I could never do it. I could never. It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> really hot. We have three seasons in the Philippines. Hot, hotter, and help. It's hot in the Philippines. I said, I can't do this. Somebody needs to go, but it can't be me. Uh, they eat rice for breakfast, rice for lunch, rice for supper, rice for bedtime snack, uh, rice pudding for dessert, and the children have visions of rice pudding, rice plums in their dreams. It's rice all the time. And I like mashed potatoes and fried chicken because I'm a Baptist. Amen. (laughs) And I said, God, there's a need here, but I can't do it. I'm a nobody. Uh, It's hard to raise support. It's hard to go to churches and people don't know me and I'm not good at asking for people to help us and there's no way I could do it. And so I began to pray. God burdened my heart. He wanted me to go to the mission field somewhere. And so we began praying, my wife and I, where God would have us to go. And uh, in 2008, God opened the door for me to go back to the Philippines. And when I landed in Manila, the Holy Spirit said, this is it. This is where I want you. And uh, I borrowed the cell phone of the man who picked me up at the airport. And I called my wife and I said, honey, God wants us to be missionaries to the Philippines. She said, I know. I was just waiting for you to uh, announce it. And so uh, when I came back uh, in the fall, I can't even talk about it. You have to excuse me. Uh, hopefully y'all had some tissue somewhere. Uh, anyway, um, we started our deputation. took us three years. Uh, we didn't, thank you. <laughs> we didn't raise as much support as we should have, but we raised what we thought would be enough. And uh, in 2011, uh, we loaded up everything we could into boxes. What wouldn't fit in the boxes we sold. And what we couldn't sell, we gave away, and we moved over to the other side of the world. And when we got there, I couldn't speak the language. Uh, Everything was different over there. We faced all kind of trouble. I had told everyone, we're not doing anything when we first get there. I'm going to get used to the culture. I'm going to get used to the climate, being hot all the time. And I'm going to learn to speak the language. And within our first month, the Lord had already started our church. So we hit the ground running. Uh, I'll never forget the Sunday, the Saturday night before we had our first service, uh, one of our members, he said, Pastor, are you sure you want to have service in our house? Uh, We're poor. And they are, the dirt floor, dirt poor. I said, Brother, if you're saved, your father owns everything. And you're not poor. And we had our first service in their house. And then for our first month, we alternated between two homes. And it's hard to invite somebody to church to somebody's house. Can you imagine what it'd be like if someone came and said, we want to invite you to this house we're having church in. And I know they did it in the first church, but it was different back then, you know. And so we prayed for a month, God, would you please give us a place to have church. And uh, we found a house. It was not in a good location. Uh, the, the, The aisle here is about the size of the street where the church was on. And on each side of the street was uh, sewage canals. It was not in a good place, but it was our place. And uh, we rented that place. I'm sorry. <laughs> we rented that place, and uh, I put concrete down on the ground in front of the house, and we built a uh, bamboo roof, 
and I bought two tarps and put it over the top of it. And that's where we had church for our first year. Saw people get saved. Amen. I could tell you how uh, I can just see their faces, the people who trusted Christ and how God worked in their Amen, life. We, so many I could tell you. There's one. Her name's Grace. She first she has cerebral palsy. And she, when she first started coming, she said, Pastor, I'm too ashamed to come inside. People laugh at me. She said, uh, could I sit outside? I said, you don't need to be ashamed. And God help us to have a church where yeah. people don't have to feel like they're pushed out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. God help us to have a church. The Bible said Jesus was the friend of sinners. Amen? Yeah. And God help us to have a church that will be friendly to people and welcome people in. But the first several times she came to church, she'd sit outside. She's too ashamed to come inside. Finally, she started coming in. Eventually, she got saved. And uh, now... They sent me a picture uh, a couple weeks ago. She's teaching Sunday school. And uh, right before I left, she started singing in the choir. And uh, I'll never forget the first time I helped her up to come sing in the choir. And I wanted to say so many things I wanted to say to her, you know. But uh, I couldn't. All I could do was cry. And uh, she looked at me. <laughs> she looked at me and said, Pastor, I'm not ashamed anymore. <laughs> I could tell you so many stories, but when we first got there, I didn't know how to tell people how to be saved for in their language. I mean, I, of course, I knew how to tell people how to be saved, but uh, I didn't know how to talk to the people. I didn't know the culture, but one of the first things we did, we started having feeding programs. People may not understand what you have to say, but they can understand that act of compassion, and there's nothing like, I'll say it again, there's nothing like giving a hungry kid a hot bowl of food. And uh, the Bible said when Jesus looked on the multitude, he had compassion on them. Seems like in these days we have a lot of passion, but we have very little compassion. We want to see how holy we can look in front of other people. And in doing that, most of the time, I'm sorry, forgive me for saying this, but it's the truth. We want to compare ourselves to other people. The Bible never said for us to compare ourselves to other people. We're supposed to compare ourselves to him, and we always fall short. If I try to compare myself to other people, sometimes I may look pretty good. But if I compare myself to Him, I see what I really am. And it seems like in this day we got a lot of passion. I've heard a lot of junk when I got back. A lot of Phariseeism. People so proud of what they don't do. Seems like I've heard we don't do this. We don't wear this. We don't go here. We don't listen to this. That's great, sir, ma'am. You've told me what you don't do. Could you please tell me what it is that you actually do, you know? And so uh, when we got there, the first thing we did, we, we went out. They told us don't. They said, don't spend your money on those street kids. Don't waste your money on those street people. Uh, they'll just come for the food. God forbid that some hungry kid come get something to eat and just come for that. If I can help one get fed that was hungry then praise the Lord. Amen. But anyway, um, I've got a letter in my office back home from one of our teenagers. It said, Pastor, when I first came, I came to get something to eat. I came for the food. But she said, the reason I keep coming back is because I've received Jesus Christ as my Savior. <laughs> that makes it worth everything. So many stories I could tell you. But in the video, uh, I can't, I wanted to have a slideshow and go through and tell every little thing. And I can't, I'm sorry you had to forgive me, but I can't look at the pictures and try and talk about it without breaking down. Uh, I don't want to be here. Uh, I love America. I do. This has always been home, but it's not home anymore. My heart's in the Philippines. God put my heart there. And so uh, he just had to forgive me, okay? But anyway, in the video, you're going to see a lot of pictures from the feeding program. Their pictures are all jumbled. Uh, some of them are from now, our building where we are now. And... Some of them are from when we first started. We started in that house, and people were breaking in. We were having all kinds of trouble, and uh, the Lord opened the door for us to move to the village just near there. And so uh, we moved there, and God has really taken things off. We have a Christian school that the Lord has started. The Lord's done all of this. It's not me. It's Him. And uh, from the Christian school that we have, we've got several of the parents who are attending the church. Uh, four of the parents who uh, their children were attending in our school are faithful members of the church now. Uh, they've been baptized and they're serving the Lord. 
and, and, and I, I praise him for that. So anyway, I'll show you the video. Uh, it's, it's about eight minutes long, and so you just bear with me, okay? I hope it's a blessing to you. I appreciate you uh, letting me come. We had a uh, missionary visa. And I'll tell you this while it's booting up. We had a missionary visa. I had to downgrade for some... So for, I, had, I had to part ways with somebody who was our petitioner over some doctrinal issues. And whenever I uh, went to extend my tourist <coughs> visa, they told me I couldn't extend it anymore. I had to leave the country. I'd been there too long. And so whenever I... Um, I wanted to just come right back. Just leave the country and come right back. But the truth of the matter is, they don't give you plane tickets for free. And they don't give you the, the visas for free. And so when I, since we're here, I had to try and raise money. And Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. And it is. It's a whole lot easier to be the one giving, you know, than to be the one standing. Because I'm not the kind of person to ask for anything. I'm really not. I, I hate to ask. I mean, if I'm at your house and I'm thirsty... I'll just sit there and be thirsty. I don't. I won't ask for a drink of water. I'm just like that. But and to have to do what we're having to do, it's, it's hard. Not because I'm too proud, just because I hate to bother people. And I know people are struggling. People don't have money to give, and, and it's hard. It really is hard. But you please pray for us that uh, that God will take care. I will show you the rest. Show you this video.
started having game day with the youth and uh, one of the games I started I taught them we did uh, family feud and one of the questions was I tried to think of things that could could relate to them too you know and one of the questions was name something that you'd buy on credit something you get along for and the top answers on the list were uh, a car you know, uh, a house, a boat, things like that. When I went through and asked the kids, they said, rice, sardines, soap, and things like that. And uh, that's how, when I found out, really, that we're in a different world. Yeah. Some of our people, they have dirt floors. One of our most faithful members, she has a plastic sheet for a wall. And uh, that's how they live. And somebody told me, don't waste your time going to those people. You need to go to the mayor and the other people like that. Well, Jesus died for the mayor, but he also died for the, the dirt floor. Amen? Right. Amen? And so, uh, anyway, by God's grace, that's what we're doing. There we go. All right. Uh, 
Real fast, turn with me to Acts chapter 15. I want to give you something real fast. Please pray for us. Lord willing, July 31st, I'm going back home. Uh, I've got to get back. Uh, we still have $1,300 that I have to raise. Uh, but I'm going whether I've got it back or not. Uh, that's one of those things that I could, I could make payments out of my support to take care of and to take care of the rest of it. So uh, I'm going to go back whether I got it or not. But really... Could you make that a matter of prayer that God would take care of that so uh, we don't have to make payments on it? We could just go ahead and have it taken care of before I go back. Acts chapter 15, I'll read verse 33. And after they tarried their space, they, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the, uh, the apostles. Notwithstanding it pleased Silas to abide there still, something must have been going on for it to please him to stay there. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas was determined to bring with him John, whose surname was Mark. And Paul thought it not good to take him with them. He departed from them from Pomphylia and went not with them to the work. The contention was so sharp between them, they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas, and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went to Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. Let's pray. Father, help us this morning as we try and serve you. Help us to understand your word and give us a burden like we never had before. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of the thought that I had this morning, could I just say it in Filipino? It'd be a little bit easier on me. Ang dahilan kailangan kong bumalik. The reason I have to go back. Here in these verses we find Paul and Barnabas. Where are they? They're in Antioch. If you study Antioch, Antioch's a special place even for us. The scriptures that you have in your lap, if you've got a King James Bible, the original came from there in Antioch. And uh, they were first called Christians there at Antioch. Antioch was a special place. It's a special place for us now, but it was a special place for Paul. Apparently something was going on that it said, the Bible said it pleased Silas to abide there. It's a pleasing place. Can I say this? There's no place like home. Am I right? You go on vacation, you go to the beach. You, well, Christians don't go to the beach. We go to the coast, okay? We call it the coast, but it's the beach. Uh, and, but you go somewhere, you, you go afar off, and it's beautiful, and you have a good time. Uh, but there's no place like home. Uh, there's no toilet like the toilet back home, amen? There's no bed. Uh, come on, y'all. No. There's no bed like the bed back home. There's no feeling like the feeling back home where you can just let your hair down and feel like you're at home. And here in these verses we find a few things about home. Paul was at home. This is his home church. This is his sending church. Number one, it's nice at home. Your family's there. When we first came back from the Philippines, I've only been here just a little while, I've had family that I haven't seen in years that I didn't see before I left to go to the Philippines all of a sudden call me and say, we want to get, this, get together, we want to see you. It's good being home because family's there. Not only family's there, but things that are familiar are there. I mean, people know me. Oh, well, you don't know me, but back where we live, people know me, you know. Familiar things. Nobody, uh, something else, food is better. Amen. You got Duke's mayonnaise. This is God's country. You got, you got several different kinds of grocery stores you can go to. Nobody will offer you dog to eat. Nobody will offer... <laughs> you look at me funny. I've eaten it before. It, it, I didn't eat it because I wanted to taste dog. I ate it because that's what they gave me. And later they said, brother, that was dog. And I've been chasing cars ever since I did that. <laughs> and don't let me get near the tire on your car. But the food's different. The food's better back home. I thought about Cracker Barrel, and I thought about all those good restaurants, the Mexican food, and all those good restaurants we have back home. And when we got back, all I could think of was, it ain't all that great. 
It's not all that great here to me anymore. Amen. My home's there now. Uh, but the food's better. It's nice back home. Number two, not only is it nice, but number two, there's a need back home. Oh, as I drove through Asheville, even this morning, I can see the need. Amen. There's a need for the gospel here in the mountains of North Carolina. There's a need here in Madison County. This is Madison County, right? Okay, <laughs> so I can sure. There's a need here. Here in the scriptures, it said that there were many that were preaching the word of God because there's a need there. There was a need for people to be taught from the Word of God. Just as much as there's a need over on the other side of the world, there's a need here this morning. So back home, there's a need, and it's nice. But the reason, ang dahilan, kailanganyad, bumalik. The reason he had to go back, he said, Hey, Barnabas, <laughs> how do you feel? Here we are, man. It's nice. There's air conditioning. Praise God, there's, there's air condition in our church. We don't have air condition. We couldn't afford it even if we had it. We've got uh, four electric fans that blow hot air on, from the ceiling on top of us. He said, man, how do you feel? Barnabas, how do you feel? He said, i got to go back. Yeah. I can't stay here anymore. i got to get back where my heart is. Amen. The reason I had to go back. Number one, there's a power at work there. There's a power at work over there. That's the reason i got to go back. There's a, there's a power of spiritual darkness. I, it's different over there. It seems like the, the protecting hand of God is here in the U.S. And we don't see the powers of demons, the powers of darkness like, like that are rampant over there. I don't like to dwell on it, but I've had crazy things happen. I remember... Uh, I don't like to talk about it too much, especially because i got a job home tonight by myself. But uh, we've had some crazy things happen, okay? I'll just leave it at that. Uh, if you want to talk about it later, maybe I'll talk to you about it, but I don't want to talk about it together, okay? But there's a spiritual darkness over there. There's a spiritual deception over there. People are so bound by religion, they, they hold the rosary beads and they think they're going to heaven because they pray the rosary. They think they're going to heaven because they receive a wafer. They think they're going to heaven because they're religious. Nobody ever went to heaven because they were religious. You don't get to heaven by being Baptist. I'm glad to be a Baptist, but I'm Baptist because I'm saved. I'm not saved because I'm Baptist. There's a spiritual deception over there that says, if I'll just follow this religion, I can go to heaven. Makes me sick. Even among the Baptists over there. You go, they go to the schools. They, 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 they preach in the, the municipal hall, in the city hall, and this is their message. How many of you want to go to heaven? Of course. There's never been a time in my life that I ever wanted to go to hell. Have you? Did you ever wake up one morning and say, boy, it sure would be a good morning to go to hell. I sure would love to be down there burning right now. I sure would, be lo I sure would love to be toasting with Satan right now. No, you never did. There's more to being saved than just wanting to go to heaven. But the message that they give, and it makes me sick, a lot of people who say they're fundamental and say that they're uh, conservative and the message for salvation they give is, do you want to go to heaven? Okay, repeat after me. Did you know the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through repeating a prayer? Is that what your Bible said? For by grace are you saved through following the Lord in baptism. No, for by grace are you saved through faith. Faith in what? Faith in what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. Why did Jesus... Why did Jesus die on the cross? Because of our sin. Our sin put Him there. And if you don't come face to face with your sin and acknowledge that you need a Savior, you won't be saved. Everybody wants to go to heaven. But it's more than just wanting to go to heaven. So, there's a power at work there. Number two, the reason i got to go back, there's a people there. Oh, 
Brother Sam, you're different than them. I am different. Believe me, every time I go to the market, I know I'm different. I've been to the market with my people, and they already told me how much this is going to cost. Maybe this flour in the market, they said that's going to be 500 pesos, Pastor. When we get there, it's going to be 500. When I walk up, I have my kind of point, though. How much is this? 800. Uh-uh. No, fuck you. Mahal. Mahal you. That's expensive. 500 dalang. Five, just 500. No. And, and I walk away. And my member will come back and try to buy it. And because they saw my member with me, they won't come down on the price, even though they know it should be 500 And then a stranger could come up right after us who wasn't with me, and they'll get it for 500 Why? Because I'm, I'm a white guy. And they think I have money. I am different, you know. I look different. I'm white. I'm fat. They tease me about that all the time. Antabamo, pastor, you're so fat. That's why I'm trying to lose weight. But the first three letters of that word diet is what always gets me. Die. I feel like I'm going to die. Amen. There's a people there. They're my people. Amen. They're my, we may have different skin color, but God has put my heart over there. Those are my people. And i got to get back to them. If you saw the picture of the young... I can't even talk about it without crying. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to put on a show. I'm not like this. I'm not normally so emotional. I'm really not. The fellow with the glasses, the young man that you saw, that was me ordaining him as a deacon in our church. I wanted somebody who could oversee the church while I was gone. But when I first got there, he wasn't, he wasn't going to church. And to watch how God has changed him and how God has been working in his life. And that's just one person, but he's the one who's overseeing our church while I'm here. <laughs> cost us everything we had in immigration. And then what it cost us in the airport, we had zero dollars, zero peso. Wiped out completely. And uh, one of our members came up to me the night before we left. And he's crying. And he said, Pastor, God told me to give this to you. It was 2,000 pesos. That's a lot of money. That's the equivalent of you maybe giving me $200. I started crying. I said, I can't take this. That's half of his monthly salary. I can't take that. I'm sorry, I'm going to use up your whole Kleenex box. I don't mean to. <laughs> I said, I can't take that. That's too much. He said, Pastor, you told me if God tells me to do something, I have to do it. And God told me to give this to you. I said, I can't take it. You need it. He said, you need it too, Pastor. And we did need it. You know who's given the most and helped us the most since we've been back? The, the money that we've been able to raise and we still, like I said, we still need more, but it has not come from business owners. It has not come from wealthy people. You know where it's all come from? Little widow ladies that came up and said, here you go, take this, $20. I had a man give me $2. That's where it's all come from, for people who didn't have it. But that's, and God uses that. And I've seen God do more with that little than he did with the big. There's a people there. They're hungry. When I go back, we're going to start our feeding program every week. Brother Sam, that's crazy. Well, call me crazy, okay? You're wasting. Just let me waste. It's not costing you anything. It's coming out of our support. Amen? We're the ones paying for it. If there's a sacrifice, I'm the one making it. Just let me do it. Amen? They're hungry. They're hurting. There's a little girl in the pictures. Her daddy beats her. I found out about it one night. I was over visiting the neighbor, and she came up, and her face is all red, and she was crying. And I said, I don't know what say, yo. What happened? What happened to you? And she just grabbed me and hugged me. She couldn't speak, and I found out later her daddy's a drunk, and he beats her when he gets drunk. And the last Wednesday before I left to come to the U.S., her daddy came to church. 
He didn't get saved, but he came to church. I'll pray for him. His name's Mark. He promised me he's going to come back, but I had to leave. There's a people there, amen. It's not just it's not just a place. When I was on deputation, I said, we gotta get to the Philippines. That's all I knew. I gotta get to the Philippines. But now there's people there. Amen. It's not just a place anymore. I've got names and faces. There's a people there. And then number three, and I'll finish with this. There's a passion. There's a passion to get back there. Amen. Oh, we gotta have a burden, people. We gotta have a burden. You need a burden for your family. You need a burden for your community. God, give us a burden. Not to try and, and point our fingers at them. I'm so sick of that. I'll be honest, I'm so sick of... I, I did, I used them all. I didn't mean to. I'm so tired of everybody trying to point their finger at everyone else and say, Oh, well, look what they wear. Look what they do. Every time you point your finger, you have three more pointing back at you. And I won't. I want to be like him. I don't want to be like Grandpa. You, oh, Grandpa did it this way. Yeah, Grandpa had a steel too. Amen. Not so much that the revenue man knew about it, but he had a steel. That don't make it right just because Grandpa did it. I want my standards to be Bible standards. I want the, the stand that I take to come from the Word of God, not just because that's what Grandpa did. Did you know that you can take a stand and, and, and live for God and do something for God and not be a jerk about it? You know? <laughs> that didn't cost anything. I just figured I'd throw that out there. The reason I got to go back, I got to get back there. Somebody wrote this poem, a missionary that was getting ready to go back to the mission field. It said, if you'd been to heathen lands where weary souls reach out their hands, to plead, yet no one understands. Would you go back? If you had seen the women bear their heavy burdens with none to share, if you heard them weep with none to care, would you go back? If you had seen them in despair as they beat their breast and pulled their hair while demon powers filled the air, would you go back? But if you had seen the glorious sight when heathen people in their night were brought from the darkness into the light, would you go back? Yet still they wait a weary throng. They've waited some so very long. When shall despair be turned into song? I'm going back. I'm going back. By God's grace. I would have got right back on the plane even if it's 20-something hours. I would have got right back on the plane and went right back if I could. I don't want to be here I'm not a beggar. I don't like doing what I'm having to do, but it's just a necessary evil. So you pray for us, amen? Just pray for us that God would help us and God would use us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for all your mercy, your love. Thank you for being so good to us. Lord, I pray that you'd just help us now this morning. Pray that you'd give us grace. Help us to trust in you. Lord, I'm glad that you never let us down. So many things I wanted to say and telling about the field and telling about what you've done, but I feel like I've tried to mind you and say what you've wanted me to say. And I pray you just have your hand on us and use us now in Jesus' name.